How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Blade Runner 2029 from Titan Comics. Now this is a, a follow-up to the Blade Runner 2019 comics that ran for 12 issues or 3 uh, trade paperbacks and I have the first four here, which will be the first plot arc and the first trade paperback when that eventually comes out. Uh, now, this, uh, that being said, uh, if you guys read the 2019 comic, you'll be familiar with the main character and her motivations, and you'll understand that a lot better. But the plot of 2019, the whole deal with Chloe and stuff, that got all wrapped up really nicely at the end of the 2019 comic. So, um, that doesn't really carry over. The plot of this book is a whole original plot, but with the same character. So, if you haven't read 2019, you may not know the character as well, but the, the story itself is a whole new story. So, I uh, don't have to worry about that. And now, let's, that being said, let's, uh, let's look at these really nice covers. This is from cover artist Peach Momoko here. Now, uh, for those of you guys who have read the 2019 arc, uh, don't worry, Andre Gal Gindalno is still the interior artist, so all the interior matches, which is really good, because whenever they change the interior artist, it feels like the whole tone of the book changes. Uh, but Peach Momoko did the covers for uh, this run of the comics, so yeah, there's some really cool covers, but the interior art is still the same. So you get her with her coat, this uh, portrait for issue one, and then you get her in this uh, black outfit, which is really only on this cover here, and really fun, colorful background on that one. And then issue three, probably one of my favorites, the, uh, the full uh, figure there, and you get her in her coat, uh, letting go of her gun and the, the wind kind of going around her there. And then issue four, her in front of this, looks like a spirally pattern, but it's actually an eye. And you get to see her, you know, curled up in that. Uh, so that's issue four, which is the, the final one of the, the first plot arc. Uh, I also have this bonus item, uh, the cover artist Peach Momoko that did all these covers you just saw. Uh, she also did this variant cover for Marvel's Alien issue one. And although this really doesn't have anything to do with Blade Runner 2029, it's the same cover artist, but it's also uh, another Ridley Scott property. So I thought it would, I'd just show you guys this bonus item really quick. It's her drawing of the alien queen and this cool pattern work she does. So just a fun, fun uh, bonus item there. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the interiors. And first things first credit where credit is due so let's take a look at that credit line at the beginning of issue one we have written by Mike Johnson art by Andre Gindalno colors by Mark Lesko lettering by Jim Campbell edited by David Leach and you have con creative consultants Michael Green, Kay Perkins and Mello Brown now one thing you might note uh, interesting here Michael Green, who I believe was one of the writers of uh, 2049, the, uh, the second movie, he used to be the co-writer with Mike Johnson. Of course, they couldn't keep him on forever, but they do have him here as a creative consultant. So you still get his story input and keeping the, uh, the world of the story consistent, which I really do like. Um, so that being said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers for this plot arc, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what the story is about. Since I primarily cover setup, we're going to be looking primarily at issue one and leaving as much as I can of two through four uh, a surprise for you guys. Um, now that being said, I might spoil the movie and I might spoil the 2019 comic. I'm not really going to try to, but, you know, warning for that. Anyway, we open up and it gives us a nice previously on page, which I really wish more comics would do because, it, you know, sometimes it's months and months between these issues and you kind of figure what's going on, but you learn about Tyrell, Offworld, Blade Runners, and the Replicant Underground. It says in... 
2022, which would have been three years after the movie in the first comic. The Replicant Underground detonated an EMP in Terrell to destroy a lot of their records so replicants could, uh, to, could be free uh, and they couldn't, you know, figure out who was registered as a replicant or not. But then it also says in 2027, Ash uh, rejoined the Blade Runners. Uh, kind of surprising they would have her back after everything that happened in 2019. But so two years before this comic started, she rejoined the Blade Runners, but her bosses don't know about everything from 2019 and don't know her loyalties are divided. Uh, but yeah, if you remember at the end of 2019, she got the upgrade to her back brace and her bosses simply think she's, uh, she's all better now and that was one of the big issues. So that's, uh, that's resolved. Um, but we open up in 2017, so two years before the movie in the first comic, and you see a replicant there going to try to get help. He meets a shopkeeper that's supposedly in the underground replicant railroad going to uh, going to send him out and no one's ever going to see him again. But we soon found out why no one ever sees these replicants again. And it's really just uh, just something that Ash had set up so they can, you know, go to one place for her and stay off the street and be less messy. So uh, Ash is about to kill him. But this one's a little faster on the draw than most replicants, and he snaps the uh, the guy's neck there. But he leaves Ash alive to show that, you know, he's not going to kill people. He doesn't have to, and he's kind of, you know, this idealist. And he's like, I'll leave you alive, but you won't see the, uh, the last of me, and knocks her out there. So that's, you know, 2017. That's a Nexus 6, uh, 6 model, so he shouldn't live more than four years 2017, so 2021 would be like the latest he could live. Um, we cut to the present time, Ash being a Blade Runner again. There's this guy who's got uh, this replicant that he just bought, a, a really rich guy, but of course, Ash shows up and takes the guy out, and the replicant thinks she's going to be killed on sight as per orders of the Blade Runner, but we know that Ash is now secretly with the resistance and helps this girl to escape. Now, she talks a bit about what she's doing in the present, you know, all her connections with the underground replicant society, but she also says that, you know, she still kills the bad replicants, so a little bit of like a, a true lies thing, you know, I only kill the bad guys. So, you know, her superiors do get one in every now and then, but all the ones that are truly good, she, uh, she helps escape and they're, you know, never seen again. Um, we cut to away from her job where she's talking with uh, Fresha there and she talks about how her spine constantly hurts and the, the brace is wearing out and needs another upgrade and how she really wants to quit but then she can't do the work she wants and you get a little bit more of the relationship between these two characters at the end of 2019 it seems like these were simply the only two characters that were left you know the rest either escaping off world or dying but uh, yeah you get to see a little bit more of uh, their relationship and it was good to see that better defined we also get her back at work in this really fun panel where you get to see all the police spinners in their sort of hangar there so I really did love getting to see this section of her job but her boss needs her really quick because of this big government project you see Los Angeles is, of course, on the coast, and being a terrible future, the weather is, of course, going nuts. So they're building a giant seawall to keep the oceans at bay and keep Los Angeles from being flooded. But there's rumors that there are replicants working on the seawall, which would be a, a PR nightmare for the government. So they're sending her in to quietly investigate and see if anyone's there. And, of course, she goes in, and she finds a guy... Uh, it's supposed to be having a toxic rain, and he's the only one not wearing proper coverage, uh, you know, no mask, and he's also lifting a whole ton of pipes there. So, your obvious uh, suspect, but of course he runs away, and then rather than face capture, he decides to jump off the wall there. But before he does, he says, 
Yotun redeems, and Yotun, the name of the uh, the replicant that Ash almost killed in the prologue there, but of course that guy shouldn't still be alive, but it appears that somehow this replicant that should have only had a lifespan of four years has lived an additional eight or so, so how is this guy still around, and what's his plan? So a very uh, personal vendetta story. Uh, she's also eventually going to be trying to solve the murders. Uh, some uh, wealthy elite guy gets murdered as well as another Blade Runner, so there is more murder mystery stuff. And of course you have to find out um, who this replicant that lived longer than he should have, what's up with him, what's his plan, and you get some really cool stuff. You get a scene in an underground replicant nightclub, you get a cool scene, uh, the elite are on this big giant airship. There's some pretty cool set pieces. Um, that being said, uh, one thing I should mention is, you know, you have a replicant, a Nexus 6 model, which had that famous four-year lifespan from the movie, and he is, of course, living longer than he should, which I feel is a plot element that is going to rub some people the wrong way because that was such a big thing in the first movie, and no matter how they explain it, there are going to be some people that, um aren't the biggest fan of this just because, you know, with Batty and stuff, that was such a big, important thing. Uh, and they don't 100% explain it. You get a few things, you're like, okay, they're probably doing that. But I wouldn't be surprised if there's some other bigger explanation later on. But I know this plot is going to be something not everyone agrees with. Another interesting thing with this volume is that it has a much harder cliffhanger. Usually in 2019, the Blade Runner comics had distinct plot arcs but you know they all had definite ending points this one even though this is the end of the plot arc there's a pretty hard cliffhanger and i'm like oh man i really want the next four volumes out right now but that being said this is uh, just as good as the previous blade runner 2019 comics if you like that you'll like this as well and i do like that this is a completely fresh story and they're not forcing the old stuff into this you know 2019 did wrap up in a pretty good place and it's basically you know starting the whole thing again and it didn't really feel you know like sometimes when they do a whole new plot you're like oh why do i care but you know it pulls you in it's enough of the mystery and she is actually doing a lot more blade running than she did in 2019 so that's cool but overall i really did like this you know being a a new uh, book, you know, it's 2029, it's not 2019. I was a little worried that in the jump they might lose it, but it's still really cool. I definitely recommend picking this up if you liked the Blade Runner comics before. And if you're a new reader, I guess you could start here, although I'd definitely recommend reading the 2019 comics. Uh, but go ahead and jump on if you want right here. It's, uh, it's pretty cool, pretty fun, really did like it, but I've liked, I've liked everything so far. Anyway, uh, I might be starting to ramble. So that being said, uh, to everybody, uh, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You're really helping the channel out. I'll put a relevant playlist on the bottom. Uh, you can find my reviews for the 2019 comics ar comic arcs, arcs there. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom.